Cotton candy is a heck of a drug, I'll tell you that much. Okay, everybody, you can go to longcrime.com to watch the top trending stories of the day. But right now, we have a great interview lined up, and I want to get started. I don't want to waste any time. You know a few days ago, we were live in the Ryan Duke courtroom. You remember Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes, no relation between them. They have been charged with the murder and disappearance of Tara Grinstead, a beloved history teacher and former beauty queen who went missing back in 2005. And there has been a lot of discussion about this case. And joining us right now is somebody who covered every aspect of this case, and you can argue helped break and solve this case and leading up to what we have today. Joining us right now is the host and executive producer of the Up and Vanished podcast, Payne Lindsay. Payne, great to have you here on Law and Crime. Thanks for having me, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I got to tell you, I really liked your podcast. I thought it was very chilling at times, especially the ending. We're going to get to that in a minute. But I want to start right now from the main question, okay? So people say that listen to your podcast that you helped crack the case, that we wouldn't be where we are today with Ryan Duke and Bo, Duke, uh, Bo Dukes, excuse me, charged in connection with the Tara Grinstead disappearance um, if it wasn't for your podcast. So I don't want you to be modest. I want you to give me an honest answer. Do you agree with them on that, that if it wasn't for your podcast, we wouldn't be where we are today? I think that the podcast really did stir things up again. The case was cold when I got involved with it, and the podcast uh, basically caused everyone in the town to start talking again. So I think that there's definitely a correlation between uh, people talking again and a tip coming forward to law enforcement that helped solve this. Um, people like to say that I solved it. Um, I don't like to claim that because I didn't really solve anything, but I think that the podcast was instrumental in new information coming forward so they could finally um, make some arrests in this case, because it had been almost 12 years. Yeah, it has. We're talking about a disappearance back in 2005 and a trial now in 2018. Payne, you got to admit, it was based upon what you did that brought a lot of attention to this. So my first question to you is what drew you to the Tara Grinstead case when there are a lot of unsolved mysteries out there? Well, to be honest, I was looking to cover a case that was uh, close proximity to where I live. I live, in, uh, I live in Georgia. I got family from South Georgia. And it was my first time covering a true crime like this. And I found out early on that my grandmother actually lives about 15 minutes from Osceola where this happened. And her best friend Melba actually saw Tara the night she disappeared. And all these little strange connections started kind of piling up on me. And it just felt like the right case for me to pursue and try to find some new information in. And so just all those things combined made it feel right. And we just kept, we just kept going. Now, this, is a, <laughs> this next question is basically going to summarize your entire podcast, but I got to ask it, okay? We have people who have a lot of different theories about what happened, and we're going to get into that. But you, Payne Lindsay, we have Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes. What do you really think happened with Tara Grinstead? I'm curious your perspective after interviewing countless witnesses, looking at the evidence, we're waiting for trial. What do you think really happened here? You know, to me, it's honestly still a, a real head scratcher. There's one pivotal piece of information that I don't have that I think everyone needs to formulate a hypothesis of what happened to Tara Grinstead on that fateful night. But I think what that question is, is how did Tara Grinstead ever end up with these guys in the first place? How did they meet up? And if they, you know, was it uh, some sort of uh, thing where she was pulling into her house and they were across the street and they saw her there. What was this strange occurrence that uh, allowed them to meet up in the first place for whatever happened to happen? Um, that I don't know yet, but I do think that Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes are both involved in her murder, but I do think that um, maybe Bo Dukes is more involved than he's saying he is. And I think that uh, the more they look into this case, and hopefully at some point Ryan Duke will speak himself, um, we're probably gonna find more information that supports that. So let's just back up here. So you're saying that yes, the authorities have the right men, but there may not be entirely clear who did what. We can't forget that Ryan Duke is charged with the actual murder of Tara Grinstead, while Bo Duke, you can say, Bo Dukes, excuse me, is charged more with trying to conceal what happened to her. Are you saying that might not be the case? I don't think it is the case. Um, I think that they're both involved. I think they're rightfully charged with something here. But um, 
I don't, it, it doesn't make sense to me why Bo Dukes would help his friend out to this degree. And the stories just don't add up all the way to me. And um, I've heard plenty of stories um, of my own, one of which was at the end of the podcast. And it involved uh, an, an unnamed source coming to me, uh, telling me that uh, years ago, his, um, his brother picked up what he thought was Ryan Duke from a bar in Osceola. And this man told him that um, one time he blacked out and he thought that he killed somebody. And something about that story just rings true to me. And it gets, it gets your brain going like, okay, well, it seems like Ryan Duke, at, for some reason, either did kill Terry Grinstead or maybe he thinks he did. And if you want to go down that path and start speculating, well, I mean, what if he thought that he did kill Tara Grinstead, but he doesn't even really remember? What if these guys were messed up that night and no one really knows what happened? And someone says, hey, Ryan, in the morning, you killed Tara Grinstead last night. If that's the case, then it could be a completely different trial than we're thinking. Payne, that was one of the most chilling aspects of your podcast. At the very end, you tell this story, and again, it, it's so chilling because you're going back to uh, maybe this man picked up Ryan Duke back in the day, 2005. You, I know you said you spoke to this source, this source, this anonymous source, for about four hours, um, and that was so chilling to think about that Ryan Duke maybe was told that he did this. And again, there's no indication that was actually the person who uh, this anonymous source's brother picked up, but it's a theory. And that's the other idea. What alternative theories did you hear during your investigation that made you question, huh, maybe there's something else here? I think just the fact that, um, well, one, one main piece of information that I, I found as alarming was that the police searched the property that Tara Grin said, um, no one's ever officially announced that her remains have been found. I've heard from un, uh, unofficial sources that they have found something. Um, but it was told to me that years ago, just a few weeks after she went missing, local law enforcement went out there based on a tip that they heard that Ryan Duke and Bo Dukes had murdered Tara. They went and searched out in this pecan orchard and they were turned away. And that information was then given to the GBI. So in, so in fact, these guys' names were on their radar for this long. And it makes you wonder, one, why didn't they continue investigating this? And two, what turned them away in the first place? So those answers, are, I think, are also very important. Yeah, I, I, and that is what's chilling, why it was so cold for so long. Payne, we only have about a, a minute left. Um, I just want to say, you really, your podcast is fantastic, and I'm glad that you, you. Uh, shed light on this case. Um, I, you know, you, you have a second season out right now. You did a special on Oxygen about the Tara Grinstead case. Your second season is, is about a, a different individual, the disappearance of Crystal Ann Reisinger. As we cover the, this case, the Ryan Duke trial, we believe it's set for April 1st, what can we all be looking out for? Is this going to conclude what really happened to Tara Grinstead, or is there still going to be other theories or other questions? I think at first there's going to be more questions. I hope that the trial brings answers, but these things you never know. But hopefully Ryan Duke starts talking and then Bo Duke starts talking. And I think it's going to be, you know, one person's word versus the other person's word. And that could get very interesting, I think. Well, we got a lot of time between now and April 1st. Payne Lindsay, thanks so much for coming on. And I encourage everybody to listen to his podcast and watch that special on the Oxygen Network as well. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. All right, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our live trial of the day here on Law and Crime.